the last yesterday, we uh, I think we sent out 80 plates. We didn't have too many show up, but we we uh, we we outed plates. 80 plates, pretty good bit to feed people. Um, also, I was asked to mention at the church, we do have some leftover. If you want to stay and eat some, we got. Uh, I know we got chicken, mashed potatoes, and we got a little bit of green beans left. Uh, can't guarantee you that any of the above will be down there, but you're more than welcome to come eat if it is there. Uh, and October 31st, we got Hallelujah Night coming up. Be in prayer for this. Be in prayer for the Hallelujah Night that, that we reach these young ones. The youth is where the youth is the future, the future to come. Not just this church, but our future in general. Uh, also, Brother Pee Wee said there's a sheet in the back, sign up sheet if you want to assist in it. If you got a game you want to be over, put your game, sign your name. Uh, if not, if you can just come do anything, sign your name anyway. All help, all help is appreciated at any given time. Y'all would pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord, thankful for this day, Father. Lord, I pray that, Lord, that you speak to us today, Lord. Use Brother David in a mighty way, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to receive something from you to share with somebody, God. In Jesus' name, amen. It's higher than the mountains that I face. It's stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one thing remains. And he's higher that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant in the trial and the change, this one thing remains, this one thing remains. Never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. It's your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never ever have run out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. It's your love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love your love never fails never gives up never runs down on me your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. It's your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never ever have to be afraid. This one thing. Remain. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. It's your love. And on and on and on and on it goes.
His love never gives up on us. How many times do we give up on ourselves or, or give up on somebody else around us? Can I get some mushrooms to come up, please? You know, sometimes we go through things and we, we give up on ourselves. Or somebody around us goes through something and we give up on them. But he never gives up on us when we don't deserve it. He loves us continually, always. And we should try to be more that way every day. Nobody's perfect but him. But we should try to act more like him every day so that we can be loved as we love. Now, if we were loved like we love people sometimes, some of us wouldn't get loved sometimes at all. It's, it's an honor for somebody to love you like he does us. You know, life's tough sometimes. We do things, we go through things. But at the end of the day, or better than that, the next day when you wake up, he has woke you up to another day because he loves you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we ask and pray that you just be with this service. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears. Remove the clay from our eyes so that we can see. Lord, we ask and pray that you take these tithes and offerings and just multiply them beyond our belief. Lord, we ask and pray that you just be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For this day, we have gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with you. Your love is here, your love is We want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our brain. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. We're singing like a cloud, you are standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. Your days were here. Your days were seen. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our brain. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, feeling every part of our brain. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the 
to be in the presence of an almighty God, a living God. <laughs> he's not dead. He's not asleep. He's not resting. He's got an all-seeing eye, and he watches to and fro in the earth. Amen. Looking for who is worshiping and whose heart is set on him. Glory to God. Amen. False prophets. I don't know. We sing another one. No, they may want me to sing a special this morning. Amen. That, that would be real special. Hallelujah. 
you'll know what happened to the rest of them. No, we got a lot of people out. Some had to work. Some's on vacation. Other things going on. Amen. Some, it's just a pretty day. Might be fishing. But glory to God, we're fishing for souls. Fishing for men. Fishing for women. Glory to God of God. They come into the house of God. Very touchy subject this morning for this time and this day. And that is uh, false prophets. Amen. False pastors, false prophets, false false speakers. Even now in our modern day, it's even more than it ever has been. I wrote something down that I'll bring out later that uh, now mo almost all modern pulpits speak smooth things. Everything's smooth. Don't nothing trouble the water. Don't nothing, you know, shake nobody. Don't no nothing ever get to where it awakes people. And the Bible says it's high time that the church be alert and be awake and be uh, ever watching what's going on around us. Amen. Our young people's lives are at stake. You know, our young people are watching our older people. I don't like to say old people because there's not a lot of old people in here, but glory to God, they're watching the older and the elders and the people in the church that call themselves saints of God or men of God or women of God and their attributes are after the adults most of the time, but sometimes they get out on a limb on their own. But for the biggest part, they watch what we do and they hear what we say. And we usually say one thing, but do another. I told somebody, I don't care how much knowledge you got. If you don't apply it, it's useless. I told a man, you might drive a semi truck, but if it sits across the street and you never get in it, it's worthless. It won't, it won't do nothing for you to sit over there and dry rot. The wheels will. And then it'll be useless. You know, it's like a man worked with me one time. We was riding down the road. And he looked there. He said, this just ain't right. I said, what is that? He said, you got a sixth grade education. I got two years of college and I work for you. I started to tell him not only that, you ain't got a vehicle. You riding in my ride. Listen, you could be the smartest person on the universe. But if you don't use that knowledge and you don't use that wisdom, I mean, God will call somebody with a sixth grade education and said, He'll use what he's got. Little with the Lord is much. So I let you know that God can use a little brain and do much because God can take a little and do much. You can take a lot. And most of the time, we don't do nothing. Oh, praise God. Amen. Anyway, we're going to end up in Jeremiah. I know that we have children's church this morning. I don't know who's teaching children's church. There may not be no children. If you ain't got but one, come on back in. If you got two, come back in. We'll teach them. Amen. I don't know. How many there are in children's church, but you're dismissed. Amen. False prophets. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get into this in just a moment because, I, man, I tell you, I had to pray and ask God to reveal this to me and show this to me because I began to look at this because I've, I've said it many times. Thus saith the Lord. You know, make sure when you hear someone say, thus saith the Lord, it better line up with the Word of God or this saith an idiot. Hey, I'm gonna get in trouble, man. This day of the clown, whatever. Amen. Someone even said we was down the hill and we was talking, and I said, if someone prophesies and it don't come to pass, they're a liar. Now people look at you like, what did he just say? I said, if they prophesy to you and it don't happen, they li somebody lied. Either God lied or they lied. <laughs> Pick me, I'll tell you who lied. That's the difference between me and a lot of preachers. I'll tell you who's lying. Amen. Well, God told me he was going to do this and it didn't happen and I'm on my deathbed and I'm about to go. God lied to me. No, <laughs> the devil lied to you and you believe it and you wrote it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We'll, we'll get started. But I'm already preaching. Someone said, someone said when are you going to pray? I ain't praying. Brother John's going to pray over the service. Brother John, go ahead. I usually read it. Let's read one passage of Scripture. Let's put it up and read that one passage of Scripture. My, I'll tell you what I want to do. I, I, I don't know. I feel this. Go to Jeremiah 23 and 1. I, I'm going to drop back a little bit. I'm, I'm going to put me in trouble this morning and all pastors throughout the land that you can watch and make sure we're in tune with God and in tune with God's Word. Go back to 23 and 1. I know I didn't give that to you, but I, I just want to read that. Have Brother John pray, and then we're going to get started. Uh, meddling, I mean preaching this morning. Woe be unto the pastors that destroyed and scattered the sheep of my pastors, saith 
the Lord. Pray, Brother John. Amen. Now I'm going to drop down to verse 9. I, I really want to get into some of this. False prophets, thus saith the Lord. I know I've talked to Brother Jarvis and I've talked to Brother uh, Justin yesterday and, and, and I didn't have nothing lined up on purpose. I may end up preaching part of this tonight, but I did tell them we're going to have movie night. So I don't even know if we still got the popcorn machine or, or whatever. Somebody said, you and I have popcorn in church. Amen. You ought not have air conditioner in your house, but you got it. Amen. See, <laughs> amen. Popcorn cleans up. So we may be watching the movie tonight. If not, one of them will be speaking or I'll be speaking. God will provide a word for the house of God in due time. Amen. Listen, false prophet says, "My, this is Jeremiah. And Jeremiah starts speaking to Israel and to Judah. And he's beginning to speak out. He says, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. He said, man, I'm just, it just shakes within me. I am like a drunken man. I am like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because, and because of the words of His holiness. God is holy. God is not contradicting. God is not... I tell people all the time, if someone speaks something to you that's contrary to the Word of God, you do it right in front of them. I don't care. You tell them your pastor said do it. You wad it up. Even if you ain't got nothing, just throw it. When they say, what would you do? So I threw that garbage out. Amen. Because God will never be contrary to His Word. He won't never contradict His Word. When He speaks something to you, it'll line up. It'll be prophecy. It'll be fact. It'll be truth. And it will not be a lie. Someone say, thus said the Lord, you, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Glory to God. God ain't never spoke that to you. You better tread on thin ice and say, God, was that you or was that them? Because sometimes God will give a man of God a word for you, but glory to God, every time it's ever happened to me, it was a confirmation. God had already showed me that and spoke that to me and it was already in my heart, and it was already in tune. And I said, glory to God, that's God. A man told me a long time ago, we were riding down the road, and I already knowed that God done spoke to me that I was going to be a pastor of some kind. I mean, I was just barely in the stages of being saved. I was going to one of our first men's ministry in Hurley, Mississippi. We were driving in the van. The pastor was driving the van. And, and something was set, boy, the power of God was in that van. Just on our way, the power of God was in the van. And I was sitting over there, and with everything that has been spoke to me by the Spirit of God and by reading the Word of God, I knew that somehow, some way, we had a pastor, we had an associate pastor, and I couldn't even spell my name good. So I knew it was going to be ridiculous and hard, and it wasn't going to happen. And I didn't know how God was going to pull this off. And I thought, man, He is really a miracle working God if that's going to happen with me and out of the blue the pastor's driving and looks over and says you'll never know you may be the associate pastor someday that leaped in my spirit and and I and I, 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 I know people say I've heard people been in ministry for 30 something years that they never heard all my bullets of God but I, I know I heard God say someday you're going to be a pastor I thought, man, that's going to be impossible. He's the pastor. He's doing a great job. Ain't no one taking that spot. I didn't know I wasn't going to be the pastor there. I didn't know that within just a, a year or so down the road, I was associate pastor at the vineyard for six years and, and served as associate pastor from independent into the church to the, to the vineyard. And then I, I often look back and said, man, that was prophecy spoke from a man that's no longer even preaching today, but at one time he was hearing from God. There have been many people that really heard from God and then they got in themselves or they got something else took place and they ended up in left field. Now listen, it's 10 minutes after 11 and y'all going to have to give me this 50 minutes. I, I ain't even started yet. So I'm going to try to get done by 1230 to get us out so we can eat and get back. Amen. That is 50 minutes, ain't it? <laughs> 
my mask good. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm just thinking the times that I'm going to stutter and, and backtrack and, and just lay something out that we can have understanding. He said, man, I am shaking within me my bones. You know what was wrong in Jeremiah's day? False prophets were rising up and were prophesying and they were prophesying of their own heart. And it wasn't of God. And today we do that. You know, most people that prophesy, they prophesy smooth and good is, you know, is most of the time. And I'm one of them prosperity preachers, but I'm not one of them to give you false hope. I'm not. If you sit at home on the couch playing with the moat control and never do nothing, you'll probably starve to death. God, he said, a workman's worthy of their hire. God said, if you don't work, you don't eat. You go study it out. It's in there. God told you to mind your own business, get out of everybody else's business. And in the church, everybody's always in other people's business and they don't even know about their own business. Oh, praise God. Amen. I, I get in trouble as a pastor. They say, well, you're a pastor. You're supposed I even got to be careful and make sure I speak what is right and not what is of my heart. Amen. Glory to God. It says in verse 10, he said, For the land is full of adulterers. For that. Now listen to this. For because of the swearing and the land mourns, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their, their courses is evil, and their forces is not right. Jeremiah begins to prophesy and begins to speak to the children of God Something that I tell you today, we're right in the midst of. You always can look back at prophecy and look at prophecy and where you're at today. And I'm telling you that the the the, the good places, the 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 pleasant places are are dried up. Glory to God. And people done went crazy. And in the pulpit, we're speaking things that ain't no more truth than the man that's on the moon that ain't no more there. Someone might have landed, but they ain't there now. But things are not so and are not right. And, and Jeremiah prophesied and said, hey, that just ain't right. And that causes me to shake like someone on wine. It's like I'm a drunkard or something. It just I can't maintain myself. I can't sit back while that's going on. And then and I'm telling you, Jeremiah done went through some things. Jeremiah, and I'll get to it later. Jeremiah done got to a place where he wasn't even going to mention it no more. He got him thrown in prison. You start going against the grain. You start going against, you know, the 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 domination or the non denom or wherever you're at, and you start going against what everyone else is wanting to do. And glory to God, you'll find yourself in prison today. You most churches you go to, you'll find yourself booted out. You'll find yourself to where people say, "I ain't listening to you no more." And then there'll be a few more say, "I ain't listening to you no more." And then eventually there'll be a board that'll raise up and say, "You know what? We ain't gonna hear you no more. You're out." Amen. Glory to God. We we uh we we try to make it to where if God speaks to us and tells us to go, we'll just go. Amen. But if you tell me to go, I'm gonna say you're gonna show me where God said. <laughs> you may just want want me out because I'm telling you the truth. Listen to what he says right here. It says, For because the swearing of the land it mourns. Re 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 now listen to this because I want you to understand. It says refers to idol worship. Man, I ain't never seen so much idol worship in all my life. Now, back in that day, in Jeremiah's day, they actually set up images and things in the house of God and actually had idols that they worship. Today we don't worship idols, we worship ourselves. We the idols. Woo, I get in trouble right here. Man, I get in trouble so fast. Because I can see that if it was you know, I, I'm talking about adultery. I'm talking about idolatry. I'm talking about spiritual idolatry. I'm talking about all forms of ungodliness that's coming over into the house of God and we stamp it godly. See, I, I'm going to try to avoid everything. You just you just read me. You know, I, I got to be careful and speak real smooth. If you're doing some of the stuff you're doing and, and you're just doing it because you like it, why are you standing in the mirror so long looking at it? You don't watch it, you'll worship your own, you be your own idol. You'll be like, I look good. So I get up in the morning and go, who's that? Who done slipped in the bathroom? Yeah. See what see what see I'm, I'm trying to and then and then we got all kinds of stuff going on. 
and, and, and people sleeping around and people laying around and people kissing around. Listen, I'm telling you young people something. If you don't think you can be with that clown, you women, I'm talking to you, if you don't think you can be with that clown for eternity, for the rest of your life, and that can be your spouse, don't even date him. You don't need his nasty tongue in your mouth, no way. And if you don't think she's somebody that you can be with the rest of your life, you don't need to date them because then you're practicing divorce. Next thing you know, you'll be divorcing every time you turn around. You think you're going to be with them and that could be your spouse and you love them and you could be with them forever? Then date them. Find out. Woo, preacher, you shouldn't be talking like that. Same thing for some of y'all that's separated. You don't think you could be with them and live with them? You need to dismantle yourself from them and say, I'm disconnected. Hallelujah. I got Jesus in my life and Jesus will let me know when the right one's on his way or on her way. Boy, that's good teaching. I'll, I'll get in trouble. I, listen, I'll have to hear something from this sports show. Facebook probably won't even, you know, half of them just shut off, said, I ain't even listening no more. That's okay. They'll pick it back up later and say, boy, that was pretty good. I'm going to listen to some more of that. Listen, it's idol worship. It actually means because of the curse, beside the original curse on the earth, as described in Genesis 3 and 17, you can go read it. The Holy Spirit describes a further deepening of the curse because of added sin. If you go to the New Testament, you'll find out where it's talking about becoming lovers of themselves, boasters, liars, traitors, high mom. I didn't look the scripture up. I left it alone because I thought we'll get the picture and know where people's at. And we condone everything. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> when you get there, it's all going to be good. I'm going to tell you, if you're doing evil, it's going to be a bad day. And someone said, you're saying they're going to hell. No, I didn't say they was going to hell. But the Bible declares that you'll be judged for everything done in your body, good and bad. It wouldn't be there if you didn't mean it. When he said, you'll stand accountable for every idle word spoken, he meant it. What, play it? What does that mean? From the day I've been born again, everything else is gone. It's under the blood. It's washed away. But from the day of my new birth, I'm going to stand accountable for every idol where he said it. Well, if I repent, it's going to be gone. Yeah, it's going to be gone, but you'll still be judged for everything you do, good and bad in your body. So something, the books are being recorded is what it says. And it says on that day, the books will be opened up. Well, you think from the day you got saved that you something special and God's going to judge Judah and Israel and just pat you on the butt and tell you, come on in. You're going to stand one day. He's going to say, why you did that? You Because <laughs> the preacher said, Grace. I can stand for your face. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I hate you get up there one day with Brother David said. He's going to say, man, I'm down. I heard what Brother David said. You should listen to him. Smooth. Everybody wants something smooth. Churches all over Prince County, you go get something smooth. They'll salve you up. They'll grease you up. Man, if you... Oh, help me, Jesus. I'll be careful. Someone said, what, what churches? Ain't none of your business. Go visit. You got the right. You're in America. That's, that's what people say. It's America. I can do what I want. Then do it. I got people work for me. It's America. <laughs> then go find another job. Jarvis did. He worked for him a couple weeks and said, I'm out of here. <laughs> you still love me, don't you, Jarvis? For both prophets and priests, are profound. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Listen, is that not what that said? He said, I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. God's addressing that stuff. It's the man that's smoothing everything over. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, if everything's okay, I don't know why you divorce them. Why not just, you know, have four or five wives? Four or five husbands. If everything's so good and you ain't never going to be judged and you got saved and everything's still good, just, you know, glory to God. Listen, if you're going to do one thing, let everything right, let everything right. I don't come here and get mad at me because I preach the truth and tell you the things that the world's adapting to we're not adapting to. 
I get I could get you mad, but I'm not going to. I said I was going to meddle. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to try to stay the course because I got a lot to say in about uh, another. I got an hour and ten minutes. No, we got to go. I got to race from that, don't I? I got to race from that 40, 50 minutes. I got to. I got 40 minutes. Then just give me 40 minutes. You'll do that, won't you? It said, "Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways un, in the darkness. They shall be." Let, let me let me get up here. I'll stay with y'all. They them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them even the years of their visitation, saith the Lord. So he, he's letting us know something here. And he's letting us know how it's going to be. And he said, now listen, I don't want my way slippery into the darkness. I want to slippery into the light. But now... False prophets, go back and study it out about the false prophets. Go back and just look at it. How they were prophesying this and prophesying that. And Jeremiah was trying to prophesy right, right. Ended up in prison over it. I'll get to some of that in a minute. But we got to where everything goes. You know, uh, the the uh, I'll be careful. I, I got to, how do, how do I say this and not hurt feelings? We got, we got teenagers having, I better get that out. You can't understand me. I want you to understand me. Got teenagers having sex. Got adults having sex. Got, got every, man, he mentioned it in Corinthians talking about not having fornication. What makes you think? Well, back there in 2016, I got saved and now I'm just a sexy thing. I'm having sex. I'm sexist. I'm this. I'm that. I'm fooling around. I'm running around. I'm doing everything I want to do. And we think that's okay. And most adults think it's cute. Oh, They're going to have me a little bad meal. <laughs> think about it. It'll be children raising children if we don't watch it. But, but we're okay with everything because we say, well, back in 2016, you remember when you went up and we rubbed a little bit of oil on your head and we anointed you and we prayed for you and you say, so don't worry about it. Who's going to go to them when they land in the hospital bed and they ain't got long to live and they got AIDS or they got some other kind of disease and go in there and tell them, I, I hated to tell you that it was going to be okay, but there's consequences to sin. You just happen to happen up on some of them. You, you, I, I know you got C and B hepatitis, but glory to God, there is a cure. Let me give y'all the cure. Stay with your own wife. Stay with your own husband. It's a cure. Amen? Don't have fornication with multiple partners. Well, you can't get no more. You want me to get plainer than that? I can get plainer, but I get plainer, I get people mad. I ain't coming back. Glory to God. <laughs> you, you listen, I can't make you go to church. And I can't make you stay. And when the rapture occurs, I can't snatch you up. It'll be Him. But you got people tell you everything's okay. Don't worry about it, sweetie. You, you got saved July 20, 1997, same time your husband did. Do what you want. Run like you want. Act like you want. Do as you want. And they are to finish it out and say, it's going to be warm when you get there. They won't do that, though. They shut that off. Like God's some kind of liar. Like He's going to judge them. But He ain't going to judge us. And the Bible talks about being judged for what we do good and bad. And, and listen, if it don't matter what we do after we get saved, why would the books be open? If when I got saved July 20, 1997, my past was wiped clean, and it's under the blood, and I'm free, and he said, he's not going to remember it no more, it's gone. Why is a book being kept? Oh, God, it's going to be all blank pages. You better go read again. You better pray and read. You better study and read. You better quit taking the voice of the preacher man and get in the Word for yourself. Don't take what I say. Go back to every Scripture. Dig it out. Study it. Find out if I'm telling you the truth. Because I may stand before him someday and he says, Son, you had it wrong. You ain't coming in. And then if you follow me and I end up in and don't make it, guess who else ain't it? You know, you got to read. Listen, I, I'm I'm getting to the better stuff. Someone said, "Oh, me help me." Yeah, we done we done we done shaved us real close. So now we're gonna butter you up a little bit, but it ain't gonna be smooth. It's still gonna be truth. Amen. 
L listen in 29 and 30 real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip down a little bit for time's sake. I, man, I wanted to read the whole chapter, but you know how long it took us to get out of here if I read the whole chapter and preach it to you? I'm gonna skip down. I, I told you a story. We're gonna skip to 19 and 22 through 22. It says, be, behold, now talking about these false prophets and the things they were doing he, in slippery places and dark places and the word of the Lord come through Jeremiah and said, Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, it fell. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Can I tell you something? You keep doing wickedly, you're not going to escape the wrath of God and that's what's wrong in the church. Everybody wants to sugarcoat it and sweet honey you and rub a little bit of salve on you. But in reality, if you are living wickedly, you're going to be no different when you stand before God if you don't repent and get it under the blood. You know what I say? If you don't repent, if you repent, you know what that means? If you turn around from your wicked ways and get right and get it under the blood and then serve Him. Glory to God. I ain't going to tell you you're going to heaven. You ain't arrived yet. The Bible says in John that you know that you have eternal life. You'll know and you'll live. He said, if you keep my commandments, you're mine. If you don't, you ain't. He said it. I never forget. It's been years ago. I'm not trying to throw Casey and Jacob under the bus, but they, they weren't even married at the time. They was just, you know, I, I think they was about to get ready to get married. They was in my house. I was tapping on the floor and, and, uh, Something was said, and 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 and, and it's because Casey was young in the Lord. Then she really didn't know a lot back then. She's learned a whole lot now, knows better. But she was sitting there like, you know, this just anything ago. I said, don't you ever tell my son that. I said, I want him to blow his head off someday, and thinks everything's okay. Because if he's off in a bad way and he's in that kind of shape and blows his head off, I don't know where he goes. So you know, a lot of people say, well, it's okay. You can kill yourself, you can do anything, you can do this, you can do that, and you can do that. And you can't. You know, if someone said, do you think you'll go to hell? If you're in your right mind to do it, I do. I think it's a bad day. I think people has killed themselves wasn't in their right mind, they're okay. Because that's just the merciful God that we serve. But we got to be careful what we tell people. What we need to tell them is you need to pray and read the Word of God and find out what God says about your issues. Huh? Because you got people that's doing all kinds of stuff and say it's okay. Now they'll be sleeping around, doing whatever. I I've even heard one man made a statement recently, and I hope he watches on Facebook. I really don't care. Huh? What you going to do, fire me? If you fire me, God's got me lined up somewhere else. You, you can't stop what God's got going. You ever hear that saying, it's hard to stop a train? It's hard to stop the Holy Ghost if He's speaking to you and it's God. And if I'm doing wrong, then God will remove me. Amen. He told me one time, plain as day, I'll do you like I did Eli and his boys. I went back and looked at them. He killed them. <laughs> Lord, I'll tell them the truth. Huh? Yeah, You listen. If you Listen, I already know, Sister Melissa. I already know. If Butch starts sleeping around Melissa, He's going to end up in hell. And when Melissa catches him, he's going fast. He's going on the express lane. Huh? He, he ain't going to give him nothing. He's going to say, you better repent. You're about to leave. <laughs> I'm giving you a chance because he's merciful. I'm going to have a mercy for about five minutes. Ain't that it? Listen, I'm, I'm going to quit. And I said, I'm moving on. Someone said, you ain't mad. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. He said, the wicked, he said, on the grievously upon the head of the wicked. Is that not what it said? He said, the anger of the Lord shall not return until he had executed, until he had performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. He was talking about in Jeremiah's day. So he was talking about Judah and Israel then, but even it goes for today. Look, people always look back at the Old Testament. You think when the New Testament comes, it just stopped? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory to God. I know some of you said, I ain't coming back tonight. Amen. Me, I may not neither. Praise God. I may go with you. I want someone to pat me on the back. It's going to be okay. Okay, listen. He says, I 
have not sent these prophets, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, and they prophesy. So the Lord speaking to Jeremiah, and I is telling him, he said, I didn't send these prophets. We got pulpits filled all over the land, and God didn't call them. You know what I had to do last night at my desk? I said, God, please search me. If you don't want me to preach, let me know. Because pool pits are filled with people that God did not send them, God did not call them. And if you cut their paycheck off, you'll find out. Someone said, that means that if you don't get paid, you won't come. I come when I wasn't. I, and, and let me go and shop some of y'all. Some people said, you don't get nothing. I am getting paid now. But listen, let me tell you, if it stops, I still come. I don't believe that. Well, stop it. Amen? I'm still going to preach what God called me to preach. Now listen to this. And, and that, that's where a lot of it is, you know. You know, there's a lot of churches, they just fill up. But sin ain't never preached. Never. You know why? Because there's people that control what's being said. And there's one that controls what's being said here. And that's why sometimes I sit at home and say, God, I can't say that. You got to say that. The books are being opened. <laughs> We're writing the thing down even now. You lied to them and they ended up in a bad place. Mm -hmm. Listen, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay the course. He said, but if they had stood in my counsel, this is what God said, if they would have come to me, if they'd have been in my counsel, if they looked at what I said, listen, listen to what God says. God said, if they would have stood in my counsel, they had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil ways. Listen, is that not what he said? And, and from their ways and from evil of their doings. He said, they would have told them, man, that don't fly in the house of God. Listen. It says, the ideal of this verse is that at least some of these prophets had once known God and had been truly called by Him. However, for whatever the reason, they had lost their way. I've seen a lot of ministers and a lot of preachers and a lot of teachers and a lot of people that, man, I know they heard from God. They spoke to me and I knew they did. And then, you know, can I say that? I had someone call me one time, say as a pastor, let me go and tell you, I've made a bunch of mistakes. In 13 years, I've made much more than 13 mistakes. I've had people preach that should have never preached. But at one time, I believe they were really on track. And I believe they were really on fire. And I believe they were really trying. And I, I was that pastor that gave the first chance and the second chance and the third chance. And I thought, this time they really on fire for God. I can, I can put confidence in them. And I found out you can put no confidence in the flesh. Better to put confidence in a broke tooth and have a foot out of joint and a broke tooth than to have confidence in an unfaithful man. But, I, you know, the church was busting at the seams. It was growing and we were on fire and people were loving Jesus and loving one another and, and come to find out they was loving one another a little bit much. Uh, I had a man, him and his family come and then a little time went on and he called me. Someone said, be careful, Brother David, you're on Facebook. Hallelujah! Let them all hear it! And the guy calls me and how dare us stand in this pulpit and do what we do and then go out there and tell people we're a man of God. The Bible said he didn't even send them. They was liars. A man called me. Brother John said, I got a problem. Preacher man. He used to call me pastor every now and then. I was just a preacher man. Preacher man, I got a problem. I said, well, what's going on? He said, my wife has run off this weekend with that other preacher from over there. I said, well, wait a minute, let's get that straight. He ain't another preacher from over there. He's a hypocrite and a liar. Can I say that? I can't say that. I, this is what I was going to say. I said, he ain't nothing but a whoremonger. <laughs> that make him feel good about his wife, you know what I'm saying? And feel good about himself. That's what it is. But if you say that now, they're mad. They're puffed up. They won't never talk to you again. You know how you're blessed you are when that happens? 
You're really blessed. You may shake their hand. You don't know where their hand has been. Hallelujah. Let me, let me tell you something. The fact is, I let him know that is not a man of God. And he is a liar. And he's a false prophet. And he's a false teacher. And if he done that, then he's wrong. Someone said, you, you are in people's business. People need to know your business if you're doing that. They need to know you're a liar. They need to know you ain't prophesied from God. They need to know you don't know God. Because because of the way you live, that's the way they're going to live. And we don't need that at their age. So I called black, black, and white, white. And I told him he's a hypocrite liar. And he ain't a preacher over here no more. <laughs> and he ain't. Someone said he might be back someday. Well, if he repents and gets on fire for God and doing what's right, I may make him stand up and tell you he's the one who did it so your husbands can watch your wives live. Okay, let's move on. Someone said you said enough. Did I? You want the truth? Or you want me? Well, I'll sugarcoat it a little bit for you if you want me. It's okay, brothers. Kevin, just pick you one out. Hallelujah. It's okay. It'll be all right. Maybe you don't like being cool. It's going to be hot. <laughs> Where Sister Jamie's going to send you. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Listen, I want to share something with you. This is where we're at as a whole. I, I mean, I love it. I've done this. And I, when I was looking at this commentary of this, I thought, man, God help me. Because, you know, I'm not preached a whole sermon from somebody, but I always, I'll be talking to someone at supper or lunch or breakfast. Something will be said. I'll go dig it out. The Spirit of God will deal with me and we'll get some scripture and we'll go forward. And then, you know, sometimes I'll hear a, a minister, but never have I heard so much. And not because we were at a service last night, and Brother Matthew mentioned Stephen Furtick. Don't get me wrong here, but I've heard so much quotes from other people that nothing really comes from God. Can I tell you, this came from God. I read it in the Bible. I went back and studied it. I prayed about it, and the Holy Spirit said, preach it. But we're so busy watching the air. Maybe I need to watch some more, and my preaching won't be so poor. But a lot of us don't even know. A lot of us ain't heard from God in so long. We've heard from Perry Stone. We've heard from uh, Stephen Furtick. We've heard from Jesse DePlanis. We've heard from this one and that one and that one and this one. And God ain't spoke to us in years because we ain't went to God. We went to the internet and said that must be God. Everything on the internet ain't God. Amen. Glory to God. And everything speaks from our pulpits ain't God. And God said there's false prophets raised up in the land and tell you to sleep around, lay around, run around on your wife and do what you want or run around on your husband. And if you don't repent and get it under the blood and turn back to the cross, it's going to be a bad day for you. They won't tell you that. Mm -mm. You won't hear that. Not much. You know why? That don't feel abuse. That don't hit the offering plate. <laughs> You'll be blessed beyond measure. Your pockets will be full. Your banks will be full. <laughs> and your soul will be lost if you don't watch it. Huh? I'm about to wrap up. Give me about an hour. Borrowed sermons. Passages of other uh, pages of other people's experiments, experiences. Fragments pulled from old or new divines. Nothing that ever thrills their hearts or sways their soul. God will not own such teaching as this. God's looking for some people to pray. Get on their faces before God. And me first. God, make sure my heart's right. I know you're a holy God and a just God. And I'm going to stand before you with all that mess after you went to a cross. Listen. Now, and I, I'm, 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 I'm already getting ready to close out. So I'm saying, no way, we're skipping down to verse 29. See how we're moving on? He said, and I wanted to read it all, but I'm skipping over something. You go back and study it. It's not my word like a fire. What does that mean? It's not my word like a fire. In other words, it'll burn that mess out of your life. It's not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, 
and like a hammer that breaks the pieces, the rocks. Think about it. His word like a hammer. Boom, busts the pieces stuff. Busts it where? Out of your life. Burns it where? Out of your life. You don't get saved and gives you a card. I got the card. I got the grace card. Woo, I can do anything. Woo, I can go to the club. I'm going to make it no matter what. Uh, I'm on the catwalk. I shake my little douche. I'm on the catwalk. Woo, I'm going. It don't matter what I do. You going. You just ain't going to need no jacket. Where you going? Huh? You going to be singing later on. It's hot on my little douche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hey, we're getting somewhere now. Huh? Some of y'all said, I ain't coming back next Sunday. <laughs> Me neither. The rapture may occur. It'd be full then. I'll tell you what you'll do. After the rapture, you won't find a seat in church. It'll be packed. Cars lined up the big B won't know what's going on. Brother Justin down here telling no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and Amanda was like, you tell him! No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're doing that now, ain't we? Glory to God. Let's get done. That's, you got to have a little humor in that. When you preach like this, you better get them tickled. Man, they'll run out with their arm in a sling like you ain't talking to them. <laughs> you go, Bubba. I'm coming behind you. No, I'm just kidding. It's not my word like a fire. It's not like a hammer breaks the rocks to pieces. It said in this passage, the word God is like to a fire and a hammer. A fire burns and a hammer breaks. Thus, the doctrine preached reveals the truth or falseness of the preacher. Preaching which leaves out our or denies the wrath to come is false. And such a preacher is false to teach and to preach that there's no wrath to come. Huh? That's consequences. If nothing else, you go back and read. Paul says, such a one will be removed. They'll be removed. God will remove you to save your soul. But either way, you're going to be gone. Trying to help us this morning. And I'm trying to, trying to keep it real. I'm trying to keep it humorous. Listen, listen, listen to what it says in 30. So therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. In other words, you, 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 we, we, we're getting on the internet and we're stealing everything and God ain't never gave us nothing original. I know it's all copyright, but sometimes God says, quit looking online for your word and look in my word and steal the truth. It still will cut asunder. It'll cut things out of your life. Better watch getting on the airway. I think it's getting us messed up. Because we got the word, people's confused and God is not the author of confusion. And the reason is, they hear this and they hear that and they don't know if they're coming or they're going. God said, if you get in the word, he, he said his spirit will lead you and guide you and direct you. Whew. We're getting led by so much stuff we don't know. You ever notice today, everybody's got a word? Huh? The Lord has given me a word for you. You are going to live in Africa for 39 years. Ha! Let me tell you what he said. Watch that preacher, he's lying to you right now. <laughs> You, you, you may not have 39 more years. So keep yourself fixed on Jesus. <laughs> so when he calls you, whenever it is, you'll be ready. But you, you, if, you, if you don't watch it, everybody's got a word. I'm, they're going to tell you what you're going to do. Now, you ain't even heard from God. Some people don't even know if there be any God. He said, you've been filled with the Holy Amen. I don't need a battery. <laughs> this one's got batteries. Them got cords. They cords won't ever run out. Someone said we'll be here to dark. That's what we need. 
I'm already close. Someone said, tell her to come on up then. Come on up in about 15, 20 minutes. He said, I'm against. He said, behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord, who use their tongue and say, he says. Listen, when he talked about stealing their word from their neighbors, talking about, you know, everything he says, I says, we don't ever have nothing that God says. It's always what someone else says. And what the, what the prophets and the preachers are saying is, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord's up there going, yeah, I mean, I've been here forever, and I don't remember saying that. Where do you get that from? Gabriel, come here. Is that in my word? Where did that fat preacher get that from? He better go on a diet. His airways done got stopped up. So I'm trying. <laughs> Listen, behold, I am against them who prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them. And cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. In other words, everything's light and everything's smooth. Listen, get this. Yet sent them, he said, yet I sent them not, nor command, commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. So you know if it's not God. When you're, when you're lined up with God, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some consequences to sin, but glory to God, on the flip side of that, it's good. He blesses. He takes care of. He said, I'll cause you to eat the fat of the land. He said, you'll have houses you didn't build. There are be blessings, and it'll line up with the Word. But then you get goofy and start doing things, and you think God's still going to bless it? It's not in there. He said his face is against the wicked, and I'm about to cover that right now. Will y'all give me about 15 more minutes? Huh? Okay. I had one person. It was me. <laughs> me and the Lord said 15 minutes. Glory to God. Listen, see? I'm going to read this to you. It said, after they have not any hearts, they only use their tongue to say, he saith. As if God had said to them something which he has never said. To tell people everything will be all right, just live like you want. God never said that. Never. But you hear that today. Listen. It says, see how heavenly God deals with false prophets. Go back and read in Jeremiah. Go back and read in Isaac. Go back and read how he deals with the false prophets of Jeremiah's time. And he will deal with equal severity with any who preach or teach anything other than the gospel of his beloved blessed son, the pure revelation which is written in this book. God grant that none of us may be deceived by them for your dear son's sake. Amen. And I pulled that out of a commentary. And I said, man, someone said, there you are pulling stuff out of cow. I'm saying, I'm saying as long as it lines up with the word, use it. If it don't, trash it. Listen, I got to move on. I got I to gotta get done quick. Isaiah 30 and 10. I'm trying to get done. Isaiah 30 and 10 said, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us, right? Things, speaking to us smooth things. Prophesying deceit. He, he began to, it, they, they begin to say, listen, it'd be like this morning in truth, there will be some people this morning, whether it be youth, whether it be adults, rather whoever it be. You say, Brother David, that's a little sharp. It's a little tough. It's a little hard. We'd rather you speak about Elisha sitting by the brook. And the buzzards feeding him, and the water flowing, and God supplying that. Every, this is sort of hitting my heart. It sort of hurts. I, I don't really want to hear this because this is where I'm at. Then repent. And repent means turn about face and go opposite of what you're doing. Huh? It's like the truck driver. Now, you're a truck driver now. You're a truck driver. Now, you'll understand this. The truck driver's driving down the highway, and he's just rolling along at the bridge, and there's a big fire. And he sees the fire. 
He's just driving along. All he's got to do is hit the brakes and turn in the medium and turn around. You hit it straight for the fire. Hit the brakes and turn around. Or keep going into the fire. We have a choice. I'm going to hit the brakes and turn around. I'm going to repent. Do it right. Listen, listen to what I'm telling you. Get it under the blood. I'm, I'm going to move on quickly. i got to hurry. Listen to what this says. Almost all of our modern churches and pulpits are preaching smooth. <laughs> Ain't nobody wants to stir up nothing. Nobody wants to say nothing about nothing. Listen, I'd rather you find you another pastor than me not to say nothing. I got to stand before him someday. And I'm going to stand before him for the good and the bad that I've done in my body, for the truth or the lies that I preach. And I'd rather preach truth. Listen, you paying your tithes, you run around your wife, ain't going to get it. Save your money, it'll perish with you. Repent. Turn around and do it right. Listen, this is this is where we're at. When preachers are bad, and, and this is way ahead. I, I was going to read this last, but I want to tell you this: when preachers are bad, who wonders that the people are worse? If the prophets go astray, how shall those who follow them find the right road? If the preachers are running around with people's wives that once preached, that once prophesied, that once ministered, how much more is the people going to act crazy? We've got to serve God. If you're an ambassador, means you're a mouthpiece for God. means you're speaking for God. I know it. I know it's hard this morning. I know it's tough. But my God, I hear so much stuff and I try to stay on course with the Word of God. If you're not careful, you'll preach junk. So you got to hear from God and spend that time and preach the Word and let it fall where it falls. And then we get matters between them and God. You tell them if you keep going the way you're going, it's going to be bad. It's up to them to turn around and pick it up and go right. Pick up what? Take up your cross and follow him daily. Listen, and I'm getting ready to close. Jeremiah 20 and 9. Man, Jeremiah preached the truth. Ended up in jail. Ended up in prison. Listen to what he said. Then I said, I'll not make mention of him, nor speak any more his name. But, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones, and I was weary for bearing, and I could not stay. In other words, he said, I couldn't maintain it. I, you know what? I have tried, Brother John, to quit. I've tried to walk away, and I read this message here, and I say, <laughs> I know I can't because it's like a fire, and a fire burns, and a hammer busts. Let's people know you keep doing that. Listen, someone said, I don't like that preaching. I don't like it neither when I was getting it, when God was dealing with me with this word. Someone said, where you get this word? From Jeremiah. I was reading and just reading and trying to mind my own business, and God said, I'm already over in Jeremiah 35. But he said, go back to 23. And listen, he said, man, I, I done got in trouble. I done end up in jail. Listen, preaching like this, I done got people don't like me. People don't want to talk to me. People don't want to shake my hand. People online, don't want to, I don't like that preacher. I won't never go over there. Glory to God. Listen, I'm trying to tell you the truth. That he's saying, there ain't no way. I tried to quit, Dennis, but there ain't no way because it's like a fire shut up in your bones and you just got to speak it out. And what happens? People get mad because they're fornicating, they're adultering, they're, they're idling, they're... they're they're, they're going to the club, being cute and dancing and just having fun. And they got their little, they're cute and they're having fun and they dress out so nice. You should see them. And then you got people say, it's okay.
Where's the Johns? Where's the Jameses? Where's the Peters? Where are the Palms? Where are the men and women of God? Where's the Joshua that asked for me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Okay. John, listen, I think I give it to you. Go in order. I think I give you Jeremiah 44 and 11 this time. This is what it says. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. So he's going to do that to them, but he won't do it to us. He says, I'll set my face against you for evil. What is evil? You better go read. Someone said, you on drugs right now? No, 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 no. Just read what evil is. Walking in our flesh, we get evil quick. Go ahead, Jeremiah 29. And this shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, what makes us think we will escape the wrath of God? We think it's okay for us to do it. It's cute. It's pretty. We can do what we want, live like we want, act like we want. If your words don't line up with your action, I don't want to hear you. Then maybe I'll say that again. If your actions don't line up with your word, just shut up. Ain't nobody following you. <laughs> Man told me yesterday, he said, this one guy's got a lot of knowledge. He filled up with it. Boy, he could talk. He could speak, and he's good. I said, who, you talking about the devil? <laughs> the devil pretty slick. Ain't his brother John? He knows a lot. He's been around here a few more years than us. <laughs> He's heard that word preached in and out and up and down. He's seen us stumble and fall. He's seen us preach things that wasn't so, and he would like, Ooh, keep preaching that. I'll get him. Huh? He's in the amen corner. Kevin, come on up and finish this. It's easy. I got scriptures for you to follow. John 6. Let's go. I'm closing. I'm really am. Start playing something softly. John 6. I hope something touched your heart. I hope you get set on fire for the things of God. I hope it's like a fire set up in your... I'd rather see you in heaven, see you mad at me today, and see you in heaven someday, and see you all lovey-dovey with little hearts floating in the air, a cubits, little arrow. Forget that mess. I'd rather see you mad now. I see somebody... men with their self-righteous selves. God, I heard this saying this week, God's created women for men's pleasure. He sure has in the holy matrimony of marriage. Tell that thug to get lost. Let's go, John. I'm trying to close. He won't put it up. John 6. <laughs> I don't give it to you. John 6. I didn't write it down. You better quit erasing that stuff. It's in ink. <laughs> John 6 and 63. <laughs> How dare you erase that? Listen, <laughs> John 6 and 63. Then I got one more. Pa Listen, I did it in 45 minutes. If y'all hadn't have meddled so much, we'd have already been done. And now, y'all shaking y'all's little tush around here. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh, prophet, if nothing. So you want to run in the flesh, you're getting nothing. Huh? Listen, I could go work out. I could do some crunches. I could be looking good in just a little while. Well, it might take me six months. Huh? But it'll profit little. Because the flesh profiteth. Nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life.
That's what Jesus said. He says, your flesh is going to profit you nothing. You can lose. You can get big. You do. You can you can wiggle that. I can't do that. You can, it, 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 it don't mean nothing. It's that spirit, man. That's what, what he said. My words, I speak unto you. They are spirit. And they are life. And closing, First Peter. I'm going to go, you because know, people always say, that's the old Jeremiah's, the Old Testament. Here's First Peter. Listen to what he said. Chapter 3. I think I gave him that. Who's adoring? Let it not be our adoring. See, he done put the, I done gave him the wrong one. It's First Peter 3 and 12. I don't know where that one. See, there the devil ended up in my office and wrote that down. I didn't write that one down. But this one's the one God gave me for us. We always want to look back and say, that's the Old Testament. God's not like that anymore. God's changed. I thought I read a scripture that said God changes not. He might repent. He didn't destroy Nineveh. He didn't change. He still was God. Listen, he said, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do precious things, lovely things, purity things. I know what it said. That's what we think. That's what we think today. We think that, you know, evil is evil. And if you study out the scriptures, you can find out what evil. Go to where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians and read what it talks about the idolatries and the flesh. And the things of the flesh, you want to know what's evil. It's evil. But we think that it ain't. You know why we think that it ain't? Because we're doing it. You ever notice that? You know, if I got a main squeeze on the side from my wife, it'll be okay. Because July 20, 1997, I got saved. So it'll be okay. I, I'm, I'm okay. Preacher said I was okay. What preacher have you been listening to? The Lord said he's a false prophet. He said he lies. He said, I didn't send him. He said, well, he's telling you all that smooth and groove stuff. He said... The Lord said it. I didn't say it. He said he's a liar. That's what he said. I just read scripture on top of scripture that talked about that. You go back and find everyone in scriptures and study it. He'll give you a copy. And you study it. See if it ain't in there. He said right here, he said, My face of the Lord is against them that do evil. What part of that do we don't understand? I'm asking a question. It's a question. It's a good question. Listen, I done run one battery out. Don't make me run another one out. <laughs> Someone said, hey, you run that now. You running me out. I'm running out with you. It's only 12 o'clock. It's early. Praise God. Amen. You can't sit in that seat and not be like Brother Don. Amen. <laughs> now she's mad at me. I said she's like Brother Don. No, see, <laughs> amen. Stand to your feet all over the house. I'll do something a little different. Can I do something a little different? Brother John, Brother Justin, some of you men of God, some of you women of God, I want you to come up here and stand with me. If you're a woman of God and a man of God, I want you to come up here. If you're saved and you know Jesus and you know you're on your way to heaven and you're full of the anointing and the Holy Ghost, I want you to come. Now that you won't be able to hold me, I'm finna move. Hey, this is what I want to do. Youth, I want you to come. I want you to stand in front of us. If you are youth, I want you to come stand in front of us. Now, you, now come on. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on. Come on. You. I don't do this. This is different. You ever see me call you up? I don't do this. Hardly ever. Some of these others do. I don't. Now, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Each and every one of you to stand there and close your eyes and bow your head. Listen, 
You have examples in front of you. They're walking according to the scriptures and the word of God. If you want to look to examples, look to them. But more importantly, if you want to look to example, look to the word. Look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I want you to lift up your hands. That means surrender. Lift up your hands, those that will. We're going to pray in unison. We're going to pray together in one mind and one accord over you. We're praying a hedge of protection because the enemy has lied to you. I feel people have even lied to you. I feel people's even lied on you. And I feel people's done it. Some some people has done it and not meaningful. But there's some that's that's that spoke things that's fact and they're trying to help you. You need to recognize who's for you and who's against you. And understand the enemy is against you and wants to destroy you. But Jeremiah 29, 11 says he knows the end he has for you and what he's done for you. It's a, it's a good end. He's wanting good for you. We want good for you. Now we're going to pray over you. I want you to understand something. Today is your, this is your grace opportunity. God said he has found grace on this place and he has poured out his mercy and his blessings. There's been things going on that God has watched that he's not been pleased and each and every one of you know what it is. God said those secret things won't stay secret and things that's done in the dark will be brought into light. And those things that are done will be revealed. Now, I'm going to tell you in any kind of ministry if you're going to be involved in it. As a pastor, I can tell you all the same as I tell our leadership. I wish you would refrain from all those things of the flesh that are not spiritual and follow after Christ. Paul said it like this, follow me as I follow Christ. Find someone that's truly following Christ and let them mentor you. Now, our pastors that are working with you as youth, are, I believe, are sincere. I think Brother Dennis is trying with all of his heart, but he needs some people to rise up and help him and be a support. I had more things to say, but I didn't have time to say it. But let's begin to pray over this congregation and over these youth, a hedge of protection. Brother John, begin to pray. Brother Justin, Sister Miranda, Sister Lisa, Sister Melissa, Sister Mary, go ahead and pray. Don't sing. Pray. You can keep playing softly, but pray. Sister Glenda, some of you men and some of you women of God, I've called out a few names, but Brother Kevin, Brother John, Brother Jarvis, Sister Carrie, several of you begin to pray. Your children's lives are at stake too. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray. Lord God, under the covenant, under the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray a hedge of protection about them. God, guard their minds. There's a reason the Word of God says, glory to God, renew your mind daily. Youth, you know what that means? That means renew your mind with the Word of God. Begin to read it. Begin to pray it. Begin to study it. Begin to understand it. Begin to read the Word of God. Begin to filter. See, that's your soul. That's your intellect. That's your heart. And your spirit belongs to God. But glory to God, your soul is your intellect and this is your body. You need to filter that thing. Filter the Word of God through your mind into your heart. That the Word of God will become you. It will be part of you. You'll interact with the Word of God and not with humanity. But 